Hey everyone! Surprise! Welcome back to some more Let's Play The Occult Chronicles, everyone! So, in the comments section, there will be a comment from me, which will have a timestamp in it, allow you to jump ahead to where we don't talk about why we're doing this again, because we totally are. Uh, and we're going to talk about why we are playing Occult Chronicles one more time. So, uh, as you know, if you watched the last video, uh, I had a script error that kept popping up in the game whenever we received an edge upgrade. As far as I can tell, uh, this is happening because I have modded one of the edges that we received in the last video. It is impossible for me to fix that Sarah Anawaz save game file. I do not know what I am looking for in it to make the change. I have tried using a hex editor, I've tried using cheat table and other such tools to try to fix the file, but I can't seem to do so. Whenever I make any alterations to it that I think are correct, the game itself won't launch at that point. So something is wrong. I even tried launching our save game in the base game's launcher, and it still has the problem. Uh, this is because of how the game writes your saved character out. Uh, it basically it preserves all the information about the game's state, uh, including like which edges you have and what levels they were. And I'm pretty sure that if this glitch we are getting is because of an edge we selected, that it is there's no way for me to undo it. Now I don't like leaving the game in a bugged state of that sort, and so I figured, well, I should probably then test it test the fact that I put the edges back to their original values and see if this glitch happens again. And if it does happen again, then I'm just going to have to throw in the towel at that point. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it was something that I've now modded as opposed to an issue that was in the game normally. I seem to remember us, though, having this exact problem like three or four characters ago. Near the end of the game, I had grabbed an edge or a heroic feat, and suddenly this problem began happening. But, well, I'm not, I'm not sure why it is either. So, in any case, um, I want to test my changes, because I restored all the edge files back to their base values that the game has. So now there is no difference between the two. And I figured, well, if I'm going to test it, we're making the same character, why not record it as well? And furthermore, since I really want to at least get back to where we left off, why not upload a bunch of these on in the same day? This way you guys have a nice Halloween treat for me. We have one more Cult Chronicles game this year, I suppose. So, we're going to do exactly that. So let's go ahead and recreate Sarah Anwa. And we're going to select the same mission. We will still take the story speed on Disabled. And the main reason I'm going to do that is because our starting background is still going to be the Merc. Which, in my opinion, is one of the weaker backgrounds. So we're going to remake Sarah... Anawa. We'll give her back her old picture. We will start her again with the Bone of Wands, because I don't intend to take a Wands upgrade. Select a starting edge. So we will select... What did I take last time? Oh, I took uh, Lightning Reflexes to make traps easier to do. Yep, we'll do that as well. And her stats, uh, if I recall correctly, I put three into Sanity. Okay, so here she is again. My plan will be to do as much of this... I was going to phrase that incorrectly. We will attempt to make all the same decisions when it comes to leveling up the edges that I choose, the feats that I picked, and so on, that I'm allowed to do. Now, keep in mind that because I put the edges back to their normal values, things will be quite a bit different this time around for Sarah Anawa when she levels up. Um, some of the feats that I think I took last time might not even be worth taking this time around, and the talisman edges definitely will be different than what they were the last time that we did this. I also have no guarantee that I'll pick up the correct uh, talismans this time around in order to select like one of fire, uh, one of fire, for example, or sword of air. So uh, there may be some differences in the end if I want to actually survive with Sarah. But for the most part, I will attempt to keep everything the same. All right. So here's our character, ready to go. Let's get into the game.
Uh, I tried everything I could that I could think of everyone to <laughs> to fix the game state and it just it's just not possible it it would have been possible if I well it maybe would have been possible had I not been playing Reaper mode but I'm not sure because I think the game even in the normal game it if if you don't take an edge or heroic feat I I still see them in the save game file so I think the game's just tracking everything possible and writing it out at that point. Uh, this is my way of saying that the moment you hit start game for things like edges, feats, and weapon stats, uh, I don't think you can edit them. Hey, okay, that's nice. We, we got a trench knife again. Okay, that's perfect. So I'm going to go right back to main menu to save it. I really like seeing the trench knife. That's really nice, because last time I had to reload, the, I had to recreate the game several times to give Sarah Enowa a knife. Remember that Sarah Enowa is supposed to be uh, based on the character Stiletto anyway. Her name was Sarah Enowa from Anachronox. And so she used lots of daggers, and so that's what I wanted as well. And we have a swords talisman. The trench knife. And once again, this gives us plus one swords. That's really nice to see. And it's one of the things I really you really hope for when it's playing the Merc is because they don't get a perk similar to some of the other classes. Skills? Classes? Yes, starting classes. That uh, she doesn't get like a plus one bonus to a particular stat. So it's kind of tricky for her. Uh, it's kind of tricky for her. It's, it's tricky for the Mercenary to do so well at the beginning of the game given that you have one less stat and something important. Alright, so I'm babbling. So let's go ahead and take a look at her. What you get for her edges? Lightning reflexes and combat anatomy. Whenever a melee weapon special ability is used, X is added to the bump up apply to any non face cards as a result we're X level edge. Holy crap! And the game actually gave us a good edge that works with our trench knife. We didn't get like a pistol edge that, that we'll never be able to benefit from. That's interesting. Oh, but our, our heroic feats are not... Well, she blade dancers, I think that's a long blade weapon. So we have, we have Reckless Charge. We should take a look at this. Roll one bone and bump the card values down on X random not yet revealed non face trick cards, where X is the, what you rolled, and then draw X cards, where X is the number that you rolled. Any result cards that are wounds are doubled in the following phases. I'm actually not sure how... About how that last sentence is supposed to apply to us. So there are you there's two ways to look at that. That any of the health loss cards that we select are doubled, or that the odds of us getting a wound card is doubled. I'm not sure what that means. It's a very good skill, but that that's a terrible penalty if you don't actually manage to win the fight. The blade dances. At least one long blade item. So, just like last time, we cannot actually use the blade dances. Roll one bone and bump the card values down on X re random revealed non-trick cards minus X. Then draw a card. You know, I'm tempted to just discard this. We'll get an inventory space and we'll earn an experience point. Because... The odds of us getting a cutlass or a sword are very low. Very low. I suppose we'll hold on to it at the moment. Uh, maybe you should drop it, Tim. It's just one experience point. If we end up getting like two experience points, I might actually drop the blade dances at that point. Because if you discard a heroic feat because you pick up something else during, like, you win, a, you win a battle, you gain a cups item, but you're overweight, so you have to choose and discard something, you don't get the one experience point at that, at that point. You have to actually discard it first, beforehand, right? There's no secret passage, a secret door up there. Nothing by the suit of armor. What time is it? All right.
you see a typical wooden door. However, when you go to turn the knob to open it, it transforms into a vicious mechanical mouth that sinks its teeth into your hand. The pain is agonizing. You pull back your hand in alarm, only to find that it hasn't been hurt at all. We'll leave this alone at the moment. The way the doorknob lunges and snaps at your hand is very disturbing. You could swear that you hear barking or hissing to go along with it. It's not the worst challenge in the world, but we don't need to probably go in there at the moment. You see a spent candle placed next to seven chalk circles. You have the impression that somebody has been playing a game here. You notice the cards sitting in three of the circles. A sudden chill shoots down your spine as you recognize one of the cards. Death. Something supernatural is going on here, and you can feel it in your bones. A ritual was in the process of being performed and was suddenly interrupted. You can sense the spirit energy swirling about this place. Our first horror check with her. The supernatural energy invoked by the deck ritual sweeps your mind up into a dark vortex and everything goes black. You struggle to maintain your sanity. I'm not going to do the same card thing that I had done last game though. In other words, I'm not going to select very specific result cards, depending upon if I win or lose this time around. Alongside death set despair and darkness. The unseeing eye seems to preside over all three. This is a very unusual deck. You can't place it exactly from memory. You think it might have originated in the Balkans, but you are not sure. You study the setup carefully and decide what to do next. You decide to try and examine the card game set up more closely to see if you can identify it and what it was trying to do. Remember everyone that our stats now are very low again, and if most of these encounters we're going to bump into, we will not be able to probably even get a quest from them. But here we are lucky enough that we can, and so we totally should make the attempt to get the quest. Every point of experience we earn at this stage in the game is very, very important. And it's an interesting hand. Two kings and two very low numbers. We'll have to hope, though, that we can play the, the kings. That's very nice. Thank you. We were, in fact, able to do so. Yes, you recognize the deck in the setup. It's clearly the work of the Red Hand. You thought that the cult had been destroyed utterly. Why would a Red Hand divination deck be set up here? There must be a spirit key nearby. You should try to find it. So, I'm going to tell you something that I think. Uh, oh, this is that's the wrong way to phrase it, Tim. <laughs> you, do that, you do that every single time you open your mouth. I'm going to mention something that I believe is true and probably isn't. I've noticed that when you have a quest card displayed as a possible reward, that the game tends to give you other good cards around the quest card. It's it's probably not true, but I could swear it is. I almost always get some experience, like an experience card, right adjacent to a quest card. You find the key, you can play the deck with... If you find the key, you can play the deck without the worry that you might precipitate some catastrophic event. You suspect that it is nearby. A key for the deck created for the Red Hand will most likely bear the mark of the Red Hand somewhere conspicuous. You will know it when you see it. So I think this time around, the way we'll, we'll play this is that Sarah Anawa used to actually work for this cult. And the cult had a change of heart and now works against the cult that's actually here, serving the tentacled ones. And so she was informed to go here to investigate this cult. And that there would be some help for her to figure out uh, what the cult was up to. In that case, and this is the case, she has entered this room. She followed the markings uh, that the cult left for her to find that she herself would, would recognize. And she came across this deck immediately. Uh, failed the check because she wasn't expecting to see this, a horror check. But then recovered a little bit when she understood this was meant for her. And now she knows that she needs the key in order to play the deck. All right, we'll leave this alone. And I got two experience points, and I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. We will drop the, the blade dances. 
It's a decent feat, but in all honesty, I probably wouldn't even use it very much, uh, even when we do have a long blade. So we're just going to drop this, and we'll get an experience point token. And now we can increase a stat. I'm going to grab a plus one cups. Should make it a little easier for us now to do some of the battles. We're going to save the game as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep going. I suppose we'll investigate the rest of the coffee room. We're going to double... Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. Let's, let's do this. Let's, let's see what this encounter is. You see a large mobile fireplace decorated with ornate sculptures. But what really astonishes you is the fire burning within the hearth. The flames dance around and lick the walls of the fireplace almost as if it was some type of living entity. Then it strikes you. A demonic face appears in the flames and the sudden realization that this creature has noticed you sends a wave of horror roiling over you. You struggle to keep calm and not give in to panic. You are looking straight in the face of some type of flaming evil horror. It seeks to dominate your mind, and you know that you must not let that happen. Measury flames leap up all around you, driving you one step closer to insanity. The panic is overwhelming. I, in this instance, will pretend that Sarah actually recognizes this this demon, although it might not recognize... Oh, I guess it would recognize her as well. And because this makes a lot of sense, this is this is the result of a cultist summoning. And we saw the red deck hand here as well, so it, it looks like the cultist was trying to give us some assistance. But the cultist isn't here, so this must not have gone so well. The face in the fire smiles at you. This demonic creature must have been bound to the fireplace. How long ago and by whom are questions that you cannot answer. You cautiously step forward so that you can examine the situation in more detail. The demon seems contained within the hearth, but you have no idea how strong his binding there is. We'll try bargaining with it. Again, this gives us a quest early on, and those are difficult for Sarah to actually acquire. Something strange is going on here. You sense the opportunity to communicate with the demon, and perhaps figure out how it was bound here. And for what purpose? Oh, that's a decent hand. We have three face cards and two high number cards. We'll immediately use a knight. I only have four tricks, and so I'm worried I won't get a chance to play my face cards. So if the opportunity does present itself, I will immediately uh, take advantage of it. Using the lost sign language of Childash, you establish contact with the demon. The demon states that it was recently bound here by an acolyte claiming to serve some dark master. It's clear that the demon thought the human insane and dabbling in things that were way over his head. So, I guess this cultist who, was try who tried to assist us was not a very high up in the Red Hand's uh, hierarchy. The acolyte somehow managed to find a list of demonic names and binding rituals in some forgotten tome. The demon says that the acolyte would write them on small enchanted slips of paper. He believes his own name to be in the acolyte's pocket. He perished a few short hours ago when he foolishly attempted to summon and bind another demon, but got the slips of paper mixed up. Find the acolyte's body, then bring the name to the demon, and he will reward you. That's actually really super lucky. We're going to save the game again. I know you guys must be, like, scratching your head like, Tim, you save the game often. Why not play normal mode? Well, because I actually do like the... In normal mode, if you die... You just get sent right back to the beginning of the of the mansion. And since we're not playing with any story speed, that means that there is no way for us to lose whatsoever the game. We can keep throwing ourselves into the game over and over and over again. So Reaper Mode at least makes it so that if we do perish in a combat, that's the end of us. But you will still see me saving the game pretty often, just in case we do get glitches or something of the sort. Okay, so this is a shame, because I did not... I did not fix this, uh, this room, and there's no way, now that I see this room, I just remembered, there's no way for me to fix this encounter, because it's going to get, again, this has already been saved into our save game file, so if you see that question mark in this room, yeah, so this is going to, this is going to give us that error, yep, we'll, we'll still continue, you hear the taps of its metal legs on the floor, and then see it emerge from the shadows, 
a brain bot. Soldier slaves created by the Telus Rathi from human victims to fight their interdimensional wars. They are quick, efficient, and merciless. Nothing remains of their past humanity. The thought of it is horrifying. What I could do is I could stop the recording, control alt delete, and then fix this. But I don't. I think we'll still have the encounter. So here's. Uh, we'll still have the encounter. We'll still have the, the the script error. So here's what we're gonna do. We'll we'll fight the brain bot. If it goes really well, then we'll we'll just move on. If it doesn't go so well, I will control alt delete and I'll try to fix this encounter. Although again, it's. I don't think it'll actually be fixed in the game. All right. So first, let, first we have to pass a horror check, and we did so. Nice. You've seen these things in action a few times before, and you are confident that you can handle yourself in this situation. The brain bot seems to be on patrol. You should act quickly before it summons reinforcements. Wow, we have an excellent chance to flee. But we're gonna fight it. As long as we get a single sword up there that's greater than- that, that's not the king. We should be victorious. We didn't. Oh! Well, no, these, these aren't useful either. You learned much too late that those sharp, pointy legs can really hurt. Do that again. Oh, a better hand. And a victory for us. You won the battle. The brain bot sparks and sputters as the cerebral fluid leaks out of the, the brain case. So, I really want to fix this. I don't think it's going to matter, though, Tim. Well, why not give it a try? So, I'll, I'll be back, everyone. I, I am going to go ahead and all control delete this. So, give me a few seconds. When we come back, we'll be in this room, and I'll have fixed this. I'll have, fi I'll have at least seen what was causing the error so I can describe it to you guys. But I still think we will get the script error because of how the game saves work. Okay, everyone, I think it's been fixed. So, it was a really easy fix also. In the horror check, there was a comma in the lines there. I don't know why I would have done that. I must have at some point been trying to add options to pass horror checks without using wands. I seem to remember doing that early on in my days trying to mod this game. But I, I, I know I ripped out that idea after I didn't... I tried it for a little bit and didn't, didn't like it. I think I was trying to use cups instead of wands and then swords instead of pentacles for horror checks. But I, I didn't like it. And so in the end I had removed it. But I left a comma in for this one encounter. So it's been taken out and hopefully... Well, I know it's not going to fix this glitch. At least I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not, given the way that the game files are written. However, maybe I'm wrong. So it won't be the first time. Let's go ahead and go down there and see if it's been if it, if, uh, if it will be nice to me. Holy crap! It does. All right. Wow. So I guess the game it must only save the results of the encounter to your game file after you save it. You're confronted with a creature from some type of horrible nightmare. It towers over seven feet tall and seems covered in a sticky, translucent slime. You can only describe it as a combination of a snail, cucumber, and octopus. You fight to control your revulsion. This thing is not of our world. It must be from another dimension entirely. You feel overcome with dread and a sickening revulsion. Your eyes widen disbelief as the strange creature turns to look at you. Now, I thought there was a, a Talizrati encounter that we have seen before and passed the checks against it several times. It must be something about this room's encounter in particular. You have no doubt that you can overcome this nightmarish thing that confronts you. After the initial shock of seeing this strange creature passes, you are pretty sure you can identify it. Remember your briefings on the Tunguska event of 1908. A portal had been opened by this interdimensional race of aliens known as the Talazrati. An invasion had been foiled by a precursor to the Odd. When the portal generator was overloaded, it had been a narrowly won victory. An interdimensional war had followed. This creature must be on a mission to prepare a bridgehead. You can see that right now it is in the process of creating yet another brain bot. An unfortunate victim is strapped down to a dissecting table even now. Uh, we don't have a good chance for either of these. They could go really poorly. 
I think we leave it alone and come back a little later. You think you can outrun this weird creature and get away before it can hurt you. You spin around and run as fast as you can. Alright, I'm going to save the game. Alright, so my understanding of the game files work differently. No, to remember you... I'm at... Mm, I think... Maybe it's when the game... No. Hmm. I thought the way the game files worked is the moment that it wrote to your save game, everything about the game got written at that point. But maybe it's because you didn't open this door. No, the game already knows what encounter to place here. If I was to have started, if I had created the entire first floor, all control delete, and then started again, the mansion would have looked exactly the same. Okay, well, it's it's fixed. That's that's good. I'll have to spend some more time looking at the game files to try to understand them again. I thought I had a good understanding of them. Nope, I definitely do not. Or rather, I'm sorry. I have a good understanding of the game files because I can I can both break and fix the these uh, encounters at will. I don't, apparently don't have a good understanding of how the game writes its the game files out though. A ghost suddenly materializes in front of you. It's dressed as if it stepped out of a safari on the Serengeti. It lowers its large caliber big game rifle at you and seems to be considering you closely. You don't know which is scarier, the ghost or the ethereal gun. You cower before the ghost in shame. You feel like a rodent that he might shoot for fun. The ghostly big ape hunter squints at you like he is sizing you up for his trophy wall. There is a taint to him. You suspect he once brushed elbows with a witch doctor. You both stand there in a sort of ghostly standoff waiting for the other to make the first move. You decide to enter a trance and use your skill as a medium to find out what this ghost wants. His taint is suspicious. You're unable to establish a link. The ghost seems impatient with you. Your head aches something awful. We'll try that again. <laughs> it was a miserable hand. It was like, nope, not even gonna, not even gonna bother with this. <sighs> you have no trouble establishing a link. He is quite eager to speak with you. Cheers, mate. I'm Colonel Von Pelt, and you are my prey. Unless, of course, you can prove yourself useful. It seems one of my trophies has left the roost. I want you to track it down and return it to its rightful place. Come back here and let me know how you fared, or I will track you down. <laughs> no, no, just kidding, lassie. I'll make it worth your while. Your attention is drawn to a burnt corpse sitting in a charred but yet still comfortable leather chair. The smell of burnt human flesh is overwhelming at first. You've encountered it before, and no matter how often you have experienced it, it always initiates a slight gag reflex. You take a closer look at the body to see if you can figure out what happened. That's when the hands unclench from the armrests and beckon you closer. Your eyes widen disbelief as the burnt corpse motions you closer. Come here, will you? It whispers in a long, drawn-out moan. A f you see things far worse than this. In fact, a few years back, you were assigned to the detail that had to clean up after an Agent Sherman mess. One crispy body doesn't even come close. The creature does not seem to be able to leave its chair, being partially melted into the back of it. You think you hear something. The burnt corpse talks in the slightest audible whisper. Its mouth barely moves. Don't smoke. It's part of a quest, so we decide to muster all our courage and willpower to try to get away from this burnt creature. There's something very wrong with it, and it scares you. you. Take a couple of steps back as the smell begins to fade. Oh, and as the smell begins to fade, you already feel a lot better. Soon you are away from it and feeling fine. So in looking at the files again, I realized that from many of the encounters, I removed the lose courage encounters from them. It looks like I tried to remove them from every single um, fleet encounter that I possibly could find them in. 
But we know this that's not working either, because I occasionally do still pick up Blue's Courage cards. You've come up to a large bastardly face mounted on the wall. Its features are worn, and it looks quite old. As you stare at it, you start to feel uneasy. Suddenly, you realize that the mouth is moving its lips ever so slightly, and then you hear the mumbling. It starts as a whisper, but you can't get it out of your head as it grows in intensity. If this keeps up, you are certain that it will drive you insane. You fight to keep the mumblings from overwhelming your mind. You can't understand any of it, but the droning noises seem to want to burrow deep into your skull, and that can't be good. You begin your own chant based on the Zen relaxation technique you learned in the Orient. It works to cancel out the mumbling and clears your mind of pain. Thank God. <laughs> you heard me sigh earlier because I'm like, oh, the, I'm, I'm not passing these checks with, by very much. I'm getting bad rolls. We're losing lots of sanity already. I get really dis disheartened in the early game given how difficult it is. But gaining back the five sanity we lost at the last encounter is very nice. The face on the wall looks amiable, but you know otherwise. The lips continue to move, but the mumbling is barely audible. Examining the bastard leaf more closely, you notice that there is a pictograph script of some sort disguised within the frieze that encircles the face. You sense an eldritch sorcery at work here. The bastard leaf could be enchanted, or cursed, or merely serving as a physical nexus of some malevolent force. You realize that you should proceed with caution. Aware that you must proceed with caution, you focus your mind and try to attune yourself to the rhythmic cadences that issue from the lips of this bas relief. Perhaps something can be learned from what appears to just be dangerous gibberish. Well, not with this hand, it won't be. Well, it could be. We'll have to get very lucky, though. And we weren't. You can't keep the buzzing from overcoming your barriers that you put up. It's trying to communicate with you, but your mind appears unable to comprehend it without succumbing to the pain. We'll try again. We get one more draw this time around. Uh, if we get a cups, we'll win. Okay, we won. You slip into a trance, and the words take shape in your mind. You are face to face with an eldritch ancient creature of terrifying power, and its name is Siskonomagath. It is, however, trapped in the bas relief. It wants to check a bargain with you. The bass face, the bass relief face seems to almost be smiling at you, and it makes you uneasy. The smile belies the agony that it must be in. The mumbling's meaning now seems crystal clear. Its heart has been ripped from it and hidden somewhere in the house. The sorcery binding it cannot be broken until its heart is returned to it. It wants you to seek out the wall that weaves blood, and reach inside to find and free its heart. It teaches you the words of release and promises you that you will be rewarded should you help free itself from the face. You have stumbled into an armed patrol of cultists. You hear shouting and then see a flash of weapons being fired. They don't intend to ask any questions. Unlike the vast majority of encounters that we have in the game, cultists actually don't have a horror check to them. It makes sense, if you think about it. They're, uh, they're just guys, or girls, both, with guns, in this case. So I like that, uh, that some of these do not have horror checks. And... So that you guys are aware, again, remember that I have modded this game. In fact, we are playing this again because I have a problem in the mod. I'm trying to see if at least I have gotten rid of that error by restoring the base game's files. However, the encounters still have their options added into them. And the, remember, um, the only things I restored to their original functionality were the edge cards. Everything else I tried to leave alone because I'm not having any, really any other issues with them. So I think we'll go ahead and attack them. You enjoy nothing more than a good stand-up firefight. They're human, so they will die all the same. That's a really good hand. About to say, maybe we'll even get we'll, we'll be able to use one of our face cards here too. <laughs> you won the battle. The cultist bodies lie strewn across the floor. Maybe you can find something useful on them. It looks like we are blessed with the zombie hallway again, so a way to farm experience points if we want to. I suppose those cultists must have... Something must have sensed us 
inside this place trying to talk with the ghosts. And they realized we were in here because the they heard us talking to the bas relief face and that one chant we used. They were immediately drawn to this location and tried to kill us there. Hello! We're not crossing that. In fact, there's no reason to even make the attempt. It looks like there's a room on the other side of this that we'll be able to enter. Like, without having to cross that those planks. Then again, uh, we noticed that we can get an edge upgrade if we cross the planks. So, this is something you can just easily click on over and over and over again in order to make the attempt. But if you fail that attempt, you're in the basement. And that's not a good place to be so early in the game. Even later in the game, if you're not ready for it. You saw them lying on the floor, but you obviously didn't connect the dots. You started down the hall, giving the burlap sacks a wide berth. You slipped past one large bag and then stopped in your tracks when you heard the ripping sound of cloth being torn by some sharp instrument. You turned to face the sound and witness a decaying corpse rising out of the remnants of the bag. The sharp instruments are razor-like claws. Your wishful thinking has put you in a tough position. Body sacks lying on the floor? What do you think was going to happen? I was hoping this would be the type of zombie that actually plays electric guitar. Your mind is weak. You struggle to maintain your sanity. What, what was that guy's name? Lord Raptor? Yeah, Lord Raptor. Lord Raptor was his name. How do I remember that? I haven't played Darkstalkers in years. A, a decade, I think, at least, since I last played that game. The undead creature lumbers towards you. You know exactly what it intends. At this point, it's fight or flee. You'd better hope the rest of those bags don't start moving. We have the best chance to actually use sorcery against it, so we'll do that. Zombies are pretty much decayed people, so the wither spell should be able to accelerate the process, reducing it to dust. We haven't tried it on zombies very often. I keep meaning to remove that text and put something else in there. I don't like actually, in retrospect, I don't like naming a spell. I would prefer to have the player think uh, imagine what spell they're using to defeat the creature. And it's very tempting to hold on to the king, but given that we only have three cards, three tricks remaining, I think we will spend it to win the encounter. Okay, we would have used it anyway on even a worse card to have used it on. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That experience point will be nice. We'll begin going towards it in a skill card. Next thing we're going to be taking is that um, Hyperborean Mage. There could be a, a clue token here, but more likely this is a trap. This single spot. I'm going to... Let's save the game. Let's save the game and go take a peek at that spot. It's, it's a very, very rare chance it's a clue. Clues are almost... In fact, no, Tim, no, this can't be a clue. Clues are clues are in rooms, not hallways. So this is probably a trap. I'm not, I'm not stepping on it. I was about to say, I need to check this to see if the robot is on this side. And it is. You see a strange mechanical man over near the far wall, hunching slightly forward. It looks like it has been deactivated or run out of power somehow. You have heard stories about these things from the old hands at the odd HQ. Robots, they were called. Apparently, there have been attempts by several nefarious organizations to build armies of them to conquer the world. I think this robot is also from something, but I don't recognize the pop culture reference. The second floor. We should go up just to get the second floor marked on the map. But we're not staying up there. Oh, okay, very nice. We have the boxing ring again. So, let's explore the boxing ring, but I don't intend to do this until I get more wands and pentacles. That would be the boxing manager. He'll just stay there. Suddenly, you see the dim glow of a formless ghost just ahead of you. It seems to just hang in the air. It may be the most basic of spectral creatures, an unformed psychokinetic disturbance, but it's a spirit all the same, and it would frighten any flesh and blood human. Oof, and it's going to terrify us. You stand paralyzed with fear. You hope you don't get slimed. The haunting manifests itself as a dim ball of light. 
It has no sense of its previous life or existence. It wanders hopelessly lost. You should exercise caution. These haunts cannot be reasoned with, and they can be lethal if disturbed. Well, we can use our psychic powers, but it's always best that we don't do so given the chance. Uh, at least, well, not, not here at least. We have a better chance of beating it if we just get her. That's it. That's the whole plan. Get her. Oh, I don't know if we'll be able to, to do this. We have no face cards in our hand. You didn't stand a ghost of a chance. Get her. What were you thinking? That was lucky. We'll do it again. I really dislike running from random encounters if I don't feel I must. And at this point in the game, although this is tough to do, getting a four target with five tricks and five draw, that, that is tough. It's not impossible. And so I really think that we can do this fight. And we did so. Very nicely, too. Six points over. That's four or five card draw. You got her good. No one's going to believe how you did it. And you're not sure you are either. Nice. Two courage and two more experience points. Going much better than the last time we started out. Well, well... Not much better, but we have a lot more experience points. If I recall correctly, when Sarah Anawa started last time, she had got only three experience points in the first, like, hour and a half of playing the game. We've already gotten, uh, at least five so far. You hear the sounds of something feeding. In the gloom, you see a bloated creature seated at the end of the table. Seated? Seated. Your first impression is that it is corporeal, and not a spirit of some sort. You step closer to get a better view. The creature is demonic in appearance. It's busy feasting on some type of meat that adorns a silver platter. It halts its chewing and slowly lifts up its head to examine you. The eyes transfix you. Your training tells you that you are in danger. <laughs> you fight to keep your mind from racing away with thoughts of panic and terror. You also struggle to keep your lunch down. Well, we have a, if we, we get a cups... This is doable. And we did. Oh, that's a shame. You push back the nausea and stare the demon down. You confront it with a demon of gluttony. As red juice runs down its face and chin, you struggle to overcome a growing nausea. You remember the odd lectures in demonology, a type of demon for each of the seven deadly sins described by Julianus the Theurgists in Hermerica Chaldea. These demons love to bargain, and converse by playing along with one can be very dangerous. It seems to be sizing you up like it's looking at a menu. You take a seat and manage to gain its attention. You start a conversation in Old Chaldean. Your Old Chaldean is not what it should be. It looks at you and snorts. You hope you aren't making it hungry. This could be the end of us. I'm almost out of sanity. We'll try that again. It seems eager to hear you out. In fact, it wants you to do it a little favor. Bring me more food and a bucket. The demon says it wants more food, and not just any food. There's a nursery nearby. It wants a baby. And from its description, not just any baby. Yeah, we're seven sanity. I do not ever like being below 12 for a value. It makes me very nervous. We're on the ropes at that point. Oh. You see the figure of a woman silhouetted against the wall. You call out, who's there? But get no response. You almost wonder if it might be a mannequin of some sort. A sudden chill envelops you as you step closer. The shape shifts and turns to face you, revealing the outlines of smoky wings that unfold and then flit in and out of the darkness. Your eyes wind disbelief as you confront what is obviously a winged woman of some sort. You think it must be a succubus. Your mind straight to comprehend the demonic creature that stands before you. 
Well, that was lucky, getting a two of swords for our three to take, but we'll need, okay. Nice, okay, let's say we'll need to get, we'll need to take at least two more cards, and, and use our king, if I want a chance to get some more sanity restored. You see things far worse than this. Yes, you decide this is most surely a succubus. You remember your odd training in dealing with minor demonics. You must be on your toes here. She will try and manipulate you into doing something rash, no doubt. She looks upon you with the saddest eyes you think you have ever seen. She seems to want to speak with you, but we cannot speak with her. We need more pentacles to do so. I think four pentacles. Oh, even then, I don't think you can speak with her. She is the third or fourth part of a very long quest that you get from witches in the in the backyard. Whenever I get the, this quest from the witches, I tend to side with her. This has only happened two or three times. This succubus is also, if I recall correctly, this is indeed Fall from Grace, the good aligned succubus from Planescape Torment. So we're, we're, we're just going to try to flee. You will yourself to turn and run. That's a good hand for fleeing. I will spend all our cards that I can, because I would like an evade. You muster all your willpower and soon are away from it. This way you don't have to walk around the entire thing. It doesn't matter as... Uh, this way you don't have to walk all... If we've just barely won the fleet challenge, we would put it back here. Then I have to spend the time to walk around it. It doesn't really matter, I suppose, because we're not playing with a story with the story tokens, but... Um, I should still try to play as efficiently as possible as I check the clock. We have another, another like 20 minutes. All right, so, so far, no clue tokens. We've almost got that other skill card, however. We've gained one point in cups. We did start with a nice knife. And more importantly, we've actually grabbed quite a few quests already in the beginning of the game. A group of cultists emerges from the shadows. They seem to be exceptionally stealthy. They must be scouts or guardians or some organized group that has taken up residence here. This group looks particularly dangerous. They seem well-trained, well-armed, by the look of them, well-organized. You can't tell exactly how many there are, as they move in a tight formation to hide their numbers. What must be happening here is that we killed the cultists with guns. In fact, uh, I guess they didn't, even fight, they didn't even fire a single shot because we didn't lose the, the encounter. Having not heard back from that patrol, a group of assassins was sent up here to figure out what happened. And they have encountered what happened. Ooh, we don't have a good chance of any of this. We will try fleeing. You don't like the odds on this flight. Uh, fight. You get away. You should keep moving. They seemed quite upset that you were here. And they probably are intent on making sure that you don't get away. Ooh. Okay, we evaded. So, our options... So... We, we didn't see this, and we don't see this too often, because generally I try to slug it out with the creatures. So, now this creature that we encountered is actually physically on the board. It's no longer just a random encounter. This is here. We have a few, we have like two or three turns in which we can start moving, and then they will begin to chase us. Our options, realistically, would be to maybe go into this room to circle around them. We might be able to ditch them as well. Or to go back through this room and keep exploring the house while ignoring the cultists. I think we should probably try to, to get around them. After so many turns have elapsed, they will actually go away as well. And if you go through doors, they, don't, uh, they get delayed because they have to try to figure out where you went. Now, they, they can enter doors at, through... They can go through doors to track you. So here, he guessed... He must have saw me go through that door. And as you can see, he is keeping pace with us. Okay, we ditched him temporarily. But he could very well still show up here. Okay, looks like he must have gone into the boxing room. He could have also gone upstairs. 
At first you hear the telltale scratching and scuttling noises. Rats. Probably the walls, you think. Without any warning, a veritable tide of rats floods out towards you. You've heard stories about rats in the walls, but you were unprepared for this. You wonder if they really can take a man down the, to their bones in a few minutes. Hey, that was very nice. Great to use our king on a queen. You see things far worse than this. The rats come towards you like an immovable force of nature. There must be a hundred of them. If they overwhelm you, you fear that you might not be able to get back up. Mm, it's prob Is there an exterminator in the house? You're outnumbered, but not outknifed. Well, maybe we are outknifed, given our what we have in our hand. Yep, badly outknifed. You try and hold your ground, but they are all over you, scratching, clawing, and biting. It's a nightmare come true. Thankfully, he didn't actually hurt us. We'll try that again. Nope. This is not going to go so well. We have another miserable hand. Okay. We're going to have to flee these creatures because I'm just no good at this. Oh, wow. Okay, so fleeing is just as, is almost just as bad as attacking. So, in this instance, maybe, maybe we actually use magic instead. One more time. We'll try fighting them. You kill dozens, wound even more, and fling yet more away. At some point, they seem to break, like they were being controlled by a single will, and then scatter and flee. It's very nice getting one more experience point to help us. I'm pretty sure the cultists went into this room. And they might still be around. I, for I forget how long it takes, how many turns it takes for them to finally vanish on you. Oh, you know, we, we, we could have done, like, this type of deal. Go up here, enter this room. Then this one. I was just worried the cultists might actually show up in into this room. That would have been probably an easier way to ditch them. We're going to check this corner. Because sometimes there'll be a secret passage. There is none today. A study. You are surprised by a sudden flickering of shadow that spreads out all around you. You feel like you are being choked by some invisible force. Your eyes bulge as you fight to gasp for air, and the dark shadows swirl around you. I get very lucky to win this. You start to panic, believing that you will surely suffocate. Two creatures of shadow swirl around you. You recognize immediately that you are dealing with a type of ghostly creature that feeds off human emotions, fear and pain being the most succulent. You can either stand firm and fight them psychically, or run and hope to fight another day. Well, I added shadow boxing. Oh, this is interesting. They're about equal, but no, I'm sorry. Shadow boxing is one harder for the, for the target number of five instead of four, but we do get one more draw and two more tricks, so this is probably better. You throw a few jabs and notice they actively avoid the shadow of your punches. For a second, they hesitate, and that's when you realize you can take them. It's going to be a bit of touch and go, though. Metaphorically speaking. Two queens! That's nice, assuming we don't see kings to rob us of them. I'm going to try to use our knife. Oops, uh, I, don't, I don't know what on earth I'm doing right there. It chose our wands card instead of our swords. Not many people are afraid of their own shadows, let alone others. Looks like these nightmares should have been, though. I, I need to change that text. Another experience point, everyone. I'm going to save the game. It's just about time for us to stop, too. About another 10 minutes, if that. Alright, so let's go ahead and level up. And I will take Hyperborean Sorcery, just like I took last time. 
It was an age undreamed of when wizard kings ruled by channeling a powerful dark sorcery that eventually frayed the very fabric of reality. Only fragments of this knowledge remain, and you have dedicated yourself to uncovering what you can and harnessing the power for your own use. And we'll be increasing our pentacles next to get that to a three as well. Should make some of these a little easier. A clue token. Your instincts tell you a ritual is being performed nearby. You get the feeling that it is deep below the mansion. You see ghostly wisps of smoke rising to the ceiling. You follow the wisps down to a large crumpled leather chair sitting in the gloom. Suddenly you see the illumination of a cigar and with that a ghost materializes sitting in the chair. You're confronted with a, a supernatural manifestation that sends a chill down your spine. I'll take a risk here. And it was a bad choice. When the ghostly smoke clears, you feel that you have lost some a small part of your sanity. The gentleman ghost sitting in the chair puffs away on his cigar and smiles back at you. He looks like the jovial old uncle that you never had. You sense that he is impatient, though, as his demeanor turns from a smile to a frown. Perhaps he thought you were a servant. You decide to use your psychic talents as a medium to try and find out what the ghost is doing here. He might have information that can help you. You sit down in the chair across from him and enter a trance. Mistaking you for a servant, he thinks that you were impertinent at first. Then he realizes that you still might be able to help him. He needs a favor done. Huh! My good man! I'm almost out of my cigars here! Would you be so kind as to go and fetch me a few? The ghostly gentleman leans back and puffs out a huge column of ghost smoke. He fixes you with the eyes and says, uh, There's just one catch. Of course, more like an inconvenient challenge, actually. You'll see what I mean. We can actually do that now. So that is, he wants us to go back here and grab the fingers from that smoldering corpse. I think it would be nice to complete a quest. Oh, that was dumb, Tim. You should have used your dagger there. Again. Sorry, I'm not talking. So we, we have a ghost. We're fighting the ghost. Uh, we'll use the knight. At this stage of the game, Tim, you really should not be taking chances. Yeah, luck is the name of the game so, this so early on. We got our good. It's the second ghost we got good. Two experience points will go very nicely into another pentacles. Now we'll go ahead and add another skill card to gain the athletic specialist, I think. Or maybe we'll grab a, a swords. Or maybe a fourth pentacles. Did we, I think we've gotten every single quest that we've bumped into so far. No. Well, the succubus we can't get a quest from. I actually really like the succubus's quest in particular. It's one of the few ones that gives you, like, other options. Since you can kill her and turn in the quest to the witches. Or you can side with her and kill the witches and then return to her. The big ghost game Ghost Hunter is another one. Who, uh, who gives you a choice. Because when you turn in that quest, you have the option of siding then with the heads on the wall... To kill him. I usually... So, uh, I will do that if my character is strong. I'll side with the heads. But if I get the... If I'm lucky enough to get the head and put it on the wall in the early game. Odds are... Like, very early game. Odds are I'm siding with the ghost. Just to... Uh, just to get the early experience point. Actually, no. He, he gives you an edge. Which reduces the hard... The difficulty of hard challenges by one point. That's tough. This thing seems almost seared into the chair. The fingers are what catch your eye. So this is what the gentleman ghost meant. They do indeed look like cigars. You decide to grab a bunch of them. 
Oh, that's a good hand. Two twos, but we have some... We have three face cards, one of which is a King of Pentacles. We'll just need that a Pentacles to show up here. And we did, and it was a Knight. Very nice. All of our face cards were able to be used. You snatch a few of the fingers and put them in your pocket. Not able to leave its chair. The creature howls in anger. Maybe I'm wrong about what I said earlier. Oh, but still, we're up to 18 sanity now. We, we had seven just a little while ago. That's very nice. I have a little buffer to work with. Can we open this wooden door now? That's not a good chance. I'm pretty sure you can get like an ill omen. Like all doors challenges uh, if you fail that. We could also get an aura of luck, but I don't like the odds that... that currently on that door. You decide to give the gentleman ghost his odd cigars. You hand over the charred fingers and witness the delight on the ghost's face. Huh. Yes, I know it's a bad habit and it will probably kill me after that, but the afterlife has such few genuine pleasures. Thank you, good madam. It was something for the effort. Oh, just one experience point. That sucked. Let's go with another swords. All right, everyone, and I think we should probably stop here. Let's get back in the hallway. All right, and we'll stop here. All right, everyone, thank you guys for watching. So I'll see you on the next one, assuming you guys are still interested in watching me play this one again. I th and thank you guys for being so patient. I'm sorry but we had to scrap the old Sarah Anawa. Hopefully, we won't have that edge upgrade problem with this version of her. All right, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.